probably out of all the things to figure out if you're on the right diet or not, it's bloating. When we're dealing with bloating, we're dealing with the small intestine. This is a tube that's 22 feet long and it has a very large surface area. If we open it up and stretch it out, the surface area is roughly about 2,700 square feet or about 250 square meters. The bottom line is you have a lot of surface area for absorption of food because 90% of all your digestion and nutrition happens in the small intestine. If you get inflammation, if you get an infection, or you take a medication, or you have food allergies, all of this can irritate that lining and cut down the surface area of that absorption of nutrients. And then you're left with nutritional deficiencies, vitamin D, as well as bile salts. You're supposed to recycle these bile salts. So if you run out of bile, now we can't absorb fats. One of the purposes of bile is to get rid of excess cholesterol. There's a condition called uh, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That's where you have a lot of microbes that normally should be in the large intestine, but they're in the wrong place. When you eat food, especially fiber and things like that, you start getting tremendous amounts of bloating because you're getting this fermentation. See, fermentation is a different process and that's supposed to be in the large intestine. And if it's in the small intestine, boy, you're gonna get gas in the wrong place and it's going to extend and create a lot of bloating, pain and discomfort. There are apparently certain microbes that can help it, but generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend adding more probiotics down there because you already have microbes there. On the flip side, let's say you don't have SIBO you just have some type of inflammation or damage or scar tissue in that small intestine. Why would that be? How would you end up with that? Well, usually it comes from eating processed foods early on, seed oils, the synthetic starches, the synthetic sugars too. So all that creates inflammation, it depletes you of nutrients, it feeds the pathogens, and now you have this uh, inflammatory condition. Realize the more inflammation you have, the less you can absorb in the small intestine. The solution is to do carnivore for a couple of months at least to clean out the gut while you also do intermittent fasting. It'd probably be beneficial if you took um, betaine hydrochloride chloride as an acidifier to actually help strengthen the stomach. If you're constantly shoving food down this pipe, right? You don't have a chance to let it go through. It, it keeps the, the bacteria just growing. So we have those two conditions, okay? But we also have another condition where you don't have SIBO but you have bloating and you might have other issues too like constipation and your stool might float okay which means you're not digesting uh, your fats and it could be either your gallbladder or your pancreas or it could be some type of dysfunction with your digestion so in some cases it might be beneficial to cut back on your fiber okay and then slowly increase it because that way you're feeding the microbes you have better digestion and you have better stool. I consume a lot of fiber from plants, right? From salads and things like that. I don't get them from grain or bran because it's too much of a refined product. When you have a salad, you're eating the whole thing. There's just a lot of benefits in that salad beyond the fiber to the microbes. Even the phytonutrients can help these microbes to a certain degree. But the way to get more microbes is to slowly increase the amount of like salads you eat starting off with maybe a couple cups to then gradually over some weeks more and more and more and more where you're doing like seven or more cups per day. But if you want to increase the diversity of microbes, which will make things even better, then you use different types of plants. You can also do fasting to increase the diversity as well. Vitamin B1 though is another really uh, important factor for constipation because B1 is all about supporting the nervous system. Another thing that can help that is having enough magnesium uh, as well as potassium and even sodium. So you need these electrolytes to prevent cramping of the colon. The absolute best way to know if what you're eating is the right diet is to see how you bloat, okay? To see if there's any bloating or not. If the stools are coming out really good, there's no bloating, no pain, you're feeling good, then whatever diet you're on, don't change anything. And I created another really popular video that's a little bit more in depth on bloating. And if you haven't seen that one, I put it up right here, check it out.